I'm Rachel O'Leary and today we are doing some problem solving to provide structure for both my sweet peas as well as my green beans. Ever since I repotted these, uh, I think last week, the growth has just gone insane. And both of these varieties do quite well in containers, but similar to tomatoes, they need some structure to grow up in order to support their vines. Now, if I were growing these in my yard, I would set up a simple trellis. You can certainly use something like tomato cages, but I'm deciding to try and use some string in these little plant stakes because it's extremely cheap. These are only about a dollar each, you can do this super easily, and I'm going to do the same with my climbing beans over here. If we take a close look at these plants, I already have the formation of some of the pods right here, which will become peas, which is super exciting, um, and it's happening fast. So I wanted to get things started today by just wrapping some twine around this lattice. Um, this greenhouse as well has a channel here where you can run string straight down into the container, which I'll probably do for the green beans. Um, but for these peas, I just wanted to get something started because they're growing inches every day. Very exciting. I can't wait to get my first uh, harvest out here. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to do that, and you guys can watch along. So as I mentioned, this greenhouse has these little tabs that fit into the grooves all across the greenhouse. And they're designed for hanging baskets, but I'm going to use them in this case to run stakes to my various uh, vegetables. I've also picked up some uh, landscaping. What are they called? This is not in English. Uh, landscaping staples to just tie the string to in the pot in order to hold it in a secure fashion for these guys to climb. Now if you wanted to do this on your own, you could certainly use something like rebar or bamboo or really any spare scrap lumber, even PVC would work. Um, I'm just using stuff that I already had in my arsenal. And we'll see how it works. We may need to edit this in the future, but for now, I think it should work just fine. Now I chose to use sizzle, which is a biodegradable twine because um, when these are done burying their, their veggies for me, I can toss this twine and the plants into compost. Um, and it's just better that for me than having to sort of dig through and remove stuff. Or if I were to discard it, then it bi it's biodegradable. Now the nice thing about growing um, peas and green beans in containers like this is that you can really overcrowd them because they grow vertically. So it works out really, really well. Uh, and this also means you could grow them on a patio, fire escape, or anything like that. In fact, it might actually get too warm here in the greenhouse for them. We'll have to see how it goes. Generally, these are a great spring vegetable or a fall vegetable, not necessarily known for mass production in the summer months. But again, trial and error here. Um, as these plants grow, if I need to, I can use twisty ties or things like that to secure them. Now you guys have asked a lot in the comments about this greenhouse, and I did do a full review, which I can link you to. It's called a Grow More Greenhouse Kit. And I could not be more pleased with it in all honesty. Of course, there's a learning curve because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but that's not the greenhouse's fault. Uh, the only issue I've had at all with this, as far as construction and assembly, is that one of the hydraulic panels um, that open when it gets hot, which is an aftermarket part, not part of the kit anyway, um, one of them had, has failed and I need to replace it which is easy enough to do. Um, I did, because of my Patreon followers who have donated so generously, I have been able to purchase the Shade Cloth Kit. 
Um, until today, it's been raining nonstop, so I just haven't gotten around to installing it yet, but that is on my to-do list for this week. So if you're interested in seeing that solution, make sure you're subscribed with that notification bell on so you don't miss any of the updates on this stuff. I'm going to go ahead and finish up here and we'll take a closer look. Now as you can see, I've just laid the pea plants over the string and they wrap right around it. Um, up here, you can see some baby peas forming as well as right there and really all over these plants. They are exceptionally quick growing and super easy to grow. Next door we have our green beans which are very, very similar. Now it's possible I may need to add more rigid support for these later, but growing up we always just stuck a pole in the ground or did a lattice with some string and with this variety in particular they did quite well. Next door you can see we're finally starting to get some slips from the sweet potatoes. What I'm really not in a huge rush with these is they like things really hot. So these spring fluctuations and especially the excessive rain is really not the best for sweet potatoes. So it's not a bad idea or it's not a bad thing that they won't be ready for a while yet. Um, the hope is to get these into the ground by June-ish uh, or mid-June in order to harvest before it gets cold this fall. My tomato plants have flowers. I'm almost ready to harvest my first lettuce and all in all the greenhouse is so far so good with all the vegetable production that I have planned. Stay tuned for updates um, and we'll also be moving fish out this week. So something that's really important to us is to not use chemicals on our lawn at all ever. Uh, this is a theme that is in my aquariums as well as in our food and our living space. Um, we've had a really substantial issue, you can't see it now and you'll see why in a moment, with weeds growing into our gravel drive. So we purchased a propane powered weed torch and the theory is that if you wilt them back or burn them back and then wait for them to sprout and you get to them before seed, uh, you can kill off weeds in a really great way. So I just wanted to show that to you guys real quick. So this is obviously the second treatment, but if we look closely, you can see weeds growing back through. And the first time we went a bit overboard and that Chris incinerated them, um, but from what we've learned, if you just hit them until they wilt, that robs the roots of the nutrients and the supplies that they need to continue to grow. And then you come back as soon as they sprout again, hit them again and do that until they're gone completely. It's sort of the same concept of like laser hair removal where <laughs> you, you zap them down into the roots. So we're giving it a shot here. Um, and are hopeful that this will be a great natural way to deal with the weed problem in a spot that we can't mow because of the rocks.